I had moved away from screen printing more in corporate logos and everything else to actually working a little bit closer with artists. You know, at this point, I was, I, I had a good network of people that I, that I, <coughs> that I really enjoyed what they did, um, had good people referring me, you know, and so because of this, I managed to get decent jobs. Like, this one was with uh, Rich Coleman. Um, this one was with uh, Sonic Youth. Uh, which actually came through Aaron Rose, which, as it turns out, he bounced checks on me and screwed me over on it. Um, you know, Mr. Cartoon. Uh, oh, and this is back to the rollers. Funny story about this one. You can't really see it. This is the roller right here. I knew that I wanted to do a piece underneath this bridge, so I looked at the tide chart to figure out when the lowest tide of the year was going to be. Um, as it turns out, it was only going to be in like a week or two. So I waited till, I think it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, waited out from here all the way to here, and it was nothing but pure mud. So every time I started stepping in, my foot would go so far down, I had a hard time getting it up. So I decided to take a, take a couple 2x4s and screw some 2x4 pieces of lumber on my shoes so that like, it would give me more buoyancy. So it worked almost. I got about here. And then I picked up my foot and realized that the entire shoe and wood had stuck in the mud. <laughs> so I had a giant extension pole. And so with that, I was, I was a little over halfway out. I thought, well, shit, I've come this far. I lost a shoe. I may as well go ahead and continue with it. And so I was taking the extension pole and trying to find, like, rocks that were in the, in the, the bed of the, um, the inlet here. And so once I found one, I would put it down and try to climb up the pole enough to where I would like fall over to the next area. And so it took about two hours, but I got out there and I did the damn roller in about an hour and a half, I would say. And by the time I was done, sun was coming up. It's probably like six o'clock in the morning. Managed to get out, went across, just snapped this photo real quick. This is the, the roof of my car. And I um, snapped the photo, went home, Told my girlfriend at the time, I was like, yeah, you know, I had a good night last night, put up some stuff, you know, let's go out and check it out. And so we went out there, I think probably around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they'd already buffed the damn thing. San Diego, if you're ever trying to get up in San Diego, don't waste your time. It's one of the cleanest cities I've ever seen in my life. I nearly lost my life putting up a damn roller, and it didn't run for more than six hours. So apparently it took a fucking boat out there and buffed it. So... And I think that was one of the last rollers I actually did. You know, and again, going back to the posters, I mean, this gave me a chance to kind of meet people. I think at, at, at this point, when I, was do, when I was screen printing posters, I was still fairly insecure with what it was that I was doing. In fact, I just didn't even know what I was doing. I mean, I was putting a lot of stuff out there, but there's no continuity. There's no, like, sort of vision, so to speak. I mean, at, at that point, it was more based on like the medium or the technique that I was doing rather than what it, what it was that I was actually trying to say. You know, so I think I was still hiding behind working for other people as a means of kind of getting out there creatively. You know, so with this, um, artist named Hersk, um, another piece by Hersk, uh, piece from Mike Giant, you know. At the same time, I was still kind of going out and just putting pieces on the street as something to do. You know, and this started to kind of grow into a whole series of, you know, more portraits, patterns. And then this was the actual first piece that I did that had any architecture in it. And I don't really know what it was that appealed to me about this, but, um, you know, I really enjoyed just the idea that, like, the, the lines of the piece, the, um, you know, the sort of history of it or whatever else. As it would turn out, this piece would be the beginning of me doing the the work that I'm really doing now, which is all kind of based on urban landscapes, architecture, uh, building facades, and sort of what that kind of symbolizes. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, when I, when I started doing the DJ pieces, I met a woman by the name of Freddie C. Freddie was pr pretty well uh, ingrained in the art scene. She was in the middle of organizing an event over in Berlin called Streetwise 2. Streetwise 1 had happened the, the year before and actually had, I think, 30 to 40 artists in it. Um, basically, anyone that I looked up to, respected, admired, had heard about, or wanted to meet was in, in that Streetwise 1 show. And, uh, you know, so 
when Streetwise 2 came around, I was more than flattered to, to join in when she asked me. You know, so I went over there, and the show at that point, I think, was, uh, it was, I think, Doze Green, um, Will Barris, Mr. Jago, uh, She Won. I mean, it was just the, like, a pretty heavy lineup. You know, and so with that, I, I did the, one of the, the largest piece to date at that point. You know, and uh, took me, I would guess, probably like three weeks to actually cut this out. And for those of you, is there anyone here that's not familiar with what sort of the stenciling concept or how stencils are made? I know that Chris has been teaching here for a bit, so I don't know how much has been covered and how much hasn't. But um, screen printing is, or stenciling is essentially the same as screen printing. It's sort of a primitive, primitive version. You do different layers, layer on top of each other. So when you look at this, these are, each square is a separate piece. I think that each square was roughly, I don't know, about this big by like this big. So total, you're looking at a piece that was about the same size as the screen actually. You know, so going in, you know, you, you put the first layer down. This is the beginning of the second layer. Um, that's with three layers on. And then this is the finished piece. Um, really happy with the way it came out. And certainly after this, that's when the urban landscapes that I do um, just kind of clicked. And, uh, you know, sort of haven't looked back since then. Um, the pieces that you see around it, the, the red, white, and uh, black leaves, um, that was a collaborative effort on, uh, with me and an artist by the name of O2, who was the protege of uh, She Won. You know, and so from there, I just started going out, taking photos of different, different buildings that looked interesting. Tons of abandoned spaces, tons of uh, um, dilapidated buildings, anything that was kind of outside of the generic cookie cutter. Um, architecture is what I was doing. You know, these are some of Los Angeles. You know, more LA. You know, and as I'm going through doing these, at this point I'm still hand cutting everything. You know, so to do a piece, you know, like to do the to do the larger piece that I was doing, you know, to take three weeks to cut one piece of art, it, it gets a bit tedious. And when I say three weeks, I mean working seven days a week, ten hours a day, nonstop, no breaks. Um, you know, and it just kind of became like this sort of exercise and, and you know, obs obsessive uh, compulsion. So, you know, I started trying to find a way to kind of simplify stuff or at least to sort of streamline what it was that I was doing. Still took me a while to kind of figure that out. You know, it was around this time that I actually met Eric Hayes. Um, Eric Hayes, for those of you who don't know, is old school graffiti writer who then sort of transferred in, or, transferred into like the graphic design realm. Um, he did everything from uh, the UMTV Raps logo to uh, the Beastie Boys album cover, um, Public Enemy logo. I mean, the, his list sort of goes on and on. And uh, he was another person that was instrumental in sort of guiding me and showing me the way and letting me know who's, how to get stuff done the correct way as opposed to sort of dicking around for a couple years and, you know, <coughs> losing yourself. Um, I met him through, through this job that I was doing. There's a show called Sneaker Pimps that was traveling around the world. Um, they were asking for sneaker related artwork. Um, you know, so I'd, Eric Hayes had a shoe that came out. So I basically did a portrait of the shoes that he created. Um, also did a screen print for him. As it turns out, this would be the last screen print that I did for artists. Um, Although I'd been screen printing for the better part of 15 years, one day I woke up and realized that I was actually a terrible screen printer. Um, Eric Hayes is a pretty particular guy, and when I looked at the ratio of prints that I had that were good to bad, I screwed up about one out of every two prints that I'd given him. So finally I, I hung up my, uh, my screen printing squeegee, called it a day, and uh, decided to focus, so, focus solely on the work that I was doing for myself.